Welcome back to our discussion on digital audio theory. Uh, today we're going to be talking about this concept of bit depth in our digital audio recording. Now, if you guys, and I know a lot of you are, you know, grew up in, as the MP3 generation, right? So you guys are like, oh, bits, I totally know about bits because whenever I export my MP3 or rip an MP3 off that website, right, it says it's like 192 KBS or, you know, 128 KBS, um, right? And you're like, hey, that's that's like bits, right? Well, yes, yes, but it's actually a slightly different type of bits we're talking about today. Um, these are actually bit rates and actually determining um, not necessarily quite as, as directly of having an impact on the actual audio as the algorithm and the size, uh, the amount of space that the algorithm can take up in order to render an mp3 file. So it's related, but it's going to be a little bit different. And for this lecture, um, this is not the type of bit depth we are talking about. The bit depth I'm talking about, uh, or I want to discuss with you in introducing digital audio theory, um, is and what we use in, in most uncompressed audio formats. And the most common bit depths for these are actually probably numbers you recognize. Uh, the most common numbers are going to be like 16 bits, uh, 20 bits used to be the norm almost, you know, maybe 20 years ago um, for digital audio was, was 20 bits was very high quality. But we've, for the most part, we've ignored it at this level and we've jumped right to 24 bit. Um, and there are a lot of audio buses and systems that are actually running at 32 bit, but most audio actually isn't stored at 32 bit. So really the two biggest, most important for you to know are these two 16 and 24 bit audio systems. Um, you might recognize this number 16 and 32, right? If you guys played, you know, Super Nintendo, uh, you might have known that it was a 16-bit audio system. Uh, most PCs <clears throat> around when the Super Nintendo was around were 32-bit audio systems. Um, if you played an NES, right, that was an 8-bit audio system. And you can actually see how these are all multiples, or, or, or uh, we'll say minus the 24-bit, but they're all related, right? They're all multiples of 8 um, you know, they're minus 24, but they're all powers of two, in fact, as well. Um, you might have played N64, right, N64 bits. So even though, you know, the bit depth that they're referring to in those systems uh, is usually in reference to the amount of memory the system can address, uh, again, it's related, but a little bit different than our 16-bit and 24-bit audio files. So quick refresher. Uh, two videos ago, we had our sound wave. Let me get a nice color here. I'll keep it blue for our consistency, right? And we looked at what happened um, inside the computer. We have to take a, a, a series of measurements every so often, right? Just draw my dots, and you take the measurements, and you measure the audio file. We didn't actually discuss uh, what sort of units you're measuring the audio in. In other words, when I place this dot here, what does that measurement actually look like inside the computer? Is this in inches or feet, right? Or uh, meters, right? Like, what is what is this dot there? And it turns out um, it's all relative to how many bits we are using in our system. So if you guys watched the last video, you know a little bit about binary. Uh, but I'm going to do a little bit of, this is going to be a big scary number. And if you, if you really don't like numbers, you might want to look away for a moment. Um, but if we have a 16-bit number, that means we have a series of 16 zeros or ones, right? So let me just make up a number here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? I think that's 16. And the last video, we also said that every digit was essentially, or each place in this big long number, right? Series of zeros and ones, was going to be a multiple of 2, right? Going from right to left. So this first digit is going to be the ones place, and then the twos place, and the fours place, and the eights place, and the 16, and 32. And I'm just dividing by two here, or sorry, not dividing, multiplying, 64, 128. Is that right? One, two, three, four. four. I haven't messed up yet. Okay, good. So far, I'm good. 256, 512. I'm running out of room. I'm going to start 1024, 2048, 40, what is it? 240. Oh man, I can't multiply now. No, 41, no, <laughs> 40, 96, there we go. <laughs> 81, 92, oh, 16, 384, and then 32,768. Is that right? I think I did it right. So that's a pretty big number, right? 32,000. And what this means is that for every bit I add, I'm actually drastically increasing the number of possibilities for that number. So in other words, if I only have one bit, 
I only have two possibilities. Um, the key is just look to the number on the left to know how many possibilities you have, right? If I have a zero, I can have a zero or I have a one. That's two possibilities. If I have a two bit number, that means I have four possibilities. That means I could have zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. And if I have three bits, right? If I'm using a three digit number, that means actually I actually have uh, what, eight possibilities, right? So I could write them all out, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, and then these same four numbers with ones in front, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 right? So I have actually eight possibilities if I have a three bit number. If I have a 16 bit number, right? I have the, the, the right or the topmost place value is 32,768, but I actually have twice of that. So that means 16 bits, right? Is about equal to about 65,000 possibilities. Now, why do you care that you have 65,000 possibilities? Well, that's essentially going to determine how many different possibilities you have when you take a measurement here. If, let me turn the page just to demonstrate. We go back and we'll draw, I'll try to draw it pretty large this time for demonstrative purposes. All right, so I have a sine wave. Man, I can never <laughs> get it to go where I want it to go. All right, so a big sine wave. And let's say I'm measuring this point right here in the middle of our sound wave. So this is the point on the sound wave I want to measure. Well, if I'm measuring inside of a two bit system, that means I only have four possibilities, right? So I'm gonna do this a little bit differently than the system might do it, but uh, that means one of the possibilities might be here. That was supposed to be a dotted line. That was not. <laughs> Maybe one of the possibilities is here. Maybe one of the possibilities is here. That's not even close to being a straight line. And one of the possibilities is there. So in other words, this pink dot over here, right, the sound goes up, has to be recorded as one of those four possibilities, right? Because that's as many bits as I have. So the computer will take this, or at least a little, little uh, it's actually called an analog to digital converter chip, or ADC, usually inside an audio interface. Um, we'll actually measure this dot as being there. And if this top possibility is in a two bit number, right, four possibilities, and this top bit, um, depending on if we're using a sine bit or whatnot, I'm just going to say this top bit possibility is going to be 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, and make it easy for us. So this very sample right here, it'll record 1, 1, right? And this next dot, right, if we were to go back to my pink marker, this next dot here, right, I'm just taking a dot every every sample. If you watched the uh, video from two videos ago, we learned about the sample rate. We're just going to take measurements every so often on this line. This dot is also closest to that one, right? So the next dot is also going to record 1, 1, right? And then this dot is closest to that one. So then the computer will record 1, 0. And then down here, this dot looks closest to this one. Then it'll record 0, 0 and so on, right? I'll record zero, zero again. Until you get one big long sort of string uh, of zeros and ones. And that's actually a recording of your digital audio, right? Every two numbers represents one amplitude level. And uh, the sample, it knows it's going to only take every two samples because it knows in this case, the bit depth, right, is two, right? So every two samples, look at the number, plot a point. Look at the number, plot a point. Look at the number, plot a point. And that's actually how a piece of digital audio is stored. Let's look at this inside of Cubase. So I've got Cubase open here. And uh, from a couple of videos ago, this is the guitar sample we had. So if we zoom in, you know, this is recorded at a fairly high quality level. Um, not the highest, of course, but uh, I think it's recorded at 16 bits. And you can't really tell because 16 bits, it turns out, as we saw, is about 65,000 possibilities. Let me open this up in the editor. But if we zoom as far as we can go in here, which I think is at the limit I'm at, uh, you can see that there isn't just you know a row of dots here and a row of dots here and a row of dots here and a row of dots here, right? That would be very low quality two bit audio. Instead, uh, we have almost infinite gradation, right? We have these staircases almost at any level possible. There's actually 65,000 levels. Uh, it could be, there's actually way more levels than it can be that my monitor can display. So, you, so even if it looks like they're the same over here, if we were actually able to look at the numbers and zoom in even further, we'd actually see that they're, they're, they aren't. They're actually at different levels. Um, so that's kind of cool.
right? We have 65,000 possibilities vertically to put any of these points because it's a 16-bit audio file. Um, but let me zoom down here. Uh, I have taken the courtesy of already converting this to an 8-bit file. And if you look at it, it's actually already pretty similar, right? There's actually not a huge difference, at least to the naked eye. Um, you can see some of the samples are moved around a little bit. Let me draw your attention to this one over here. Over here, right, you can see this one's a little bit off, but actually, that might even just be a screen resolution kind of thing. Um, but if we zoom in, um, this, one, this one should look a little blockier at times, perhaps a little bit less uh, smooth, but for the most part, it, 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 it fits the resolution. It turns out, right, if we go back to our paper here, not that window, no, they're the wrong window. Uh, all right, paper, if we go back to our other page here, other page, I said, other page. Uh, if we had eight bits, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, that actually means we have about 256 possibilities, um, which is a pretty big difference from 65,000, right? Going down from 65,000 to, or I'm sorry, 512 should be 512, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Huh. No, I guess 256, yeah, 256, eight bits, right? Good, good, good. Yep, 256 possibilities is a pretty big drop off from uh, 65,000. But uh, it's all exponential, right? It's, it's more about how many times can you double the number of points you have, um, just as far as our ears work and as far as the math is concerned. So this is going to sound, you know, we're going to hear some noise, it's going to be a little distorted. It's going to be bad, okay? I'm not going to lie to you, okay? It's going to be bad audio, but it could be worse, okay? <laughs> You can hear it gets really bad during the quiet sections um, because quite literally we run out of all that extra gradation of bits. When it's loud, it's generally speaking going to be okay uh, because we'll have we'll have all 500 or sorry 256 bits available to us. When we get to really small amounts, right in here, we only have a couple of bits we're working with, right, to get our resolution. So quiet parts are really going to suffer if we don't have enough bits. All right, so I know you guys were like, hey, 8-bit, I could work with 8-bit, right? 8-bit audio is super cool. Well, how about 4-bit audio? Now, with this audio, we are seeing uh, big gradation. Uh, and actually, did I dither this? That would totally defeat the point if I dithered this. Oh. Uh, I don't think I dithered it. Good. Okay. Still, it shouldn't be wavering quite like that um, for 4-bit audio. Because 4-bit audio, right, bring this back open. We know one, two, three, four. It should only be 16 possibilities. So it looks like there's way more than 16 possibilities, quite frankly. I don't know what I did. This is why I shouldn't. Why the same day I do these little examples, I shouldn't. Uh, I should record the video and not wait a couple weeks. All right. Well, in any event. There's some 4 bit audio for you. You can hear these little tiny little juts where it finally reaches a loud enough amplitude to register. So again, with lowered bit quality audio, you can see that the low sounds, the quiet sounds, really, really um, get injured, right? And for parts like this, uh, you can see basically it's either playing, you know, here's the first step down, right? And here's the, here's the zero step. We have one step down, we're going one step up, uh, and not a whole lot more than that. That's, those are basically your only options. Uh, just for fun, I went all the way down to 2-bit audio, and 2-bit audio is great, but again, this totally looks dithered. It doesn't sound dithered, but it looks dithered. Um, I don't have any effects on it. I don't know what I did to make that, but in any event, uh, here's your 2-bit audio sound. Nope, that's not it. Try this one. There we go. Just hearing clicks, right? Because the audio is only loud enough in certain sections to actually tr trigger um, the audio on and off. And I'm realizing this whole video is a mistake right now because see all these little gradations here leading up to this? That's That shouldn't be there. That should just be a flat line. And as soon as we get to the spike, we see one spike and then it flat lines and then spike and then comes back down again. Um, so I don't know how that happened. My apologies. But anyway, I hope you guys can use your imagination. Um, if I go back to my bamboo paper... Right, what we should be seeing 
is just something like this, right? Where all of a sudden the audio comes up and says, hey, I can play that amplitude and then comes back down, right? It should look more like this. Um, because if I were to do this to this entire sound here, right, this is exactly what it, the sort of thing it would look like, right? It would come down here, right? Maybe come down here, right? Our big, beautiful, uh, nice, smooth blue curve. Now it just becomes this very, very jagged, um, low resolution sound quality, all because we don't have enough bits. So how many bits is right for you? Well, there's actually a trick. And uh, it's not even guess a trick, it's just a well-known little thing. Um, keep in mind, uh, your human ear can handle about 120 decibels, right? That's the loudest sound from the quiet sound, we'll say a resolution. And this depends on frequency and some other factors, but let's just say 120 is a good thing to shoot for. That's what your ear can hear. Uh, CDs six, are 16 bit. And for each bit of resolution, you get approximately six decibels of dynamic range, right? That's loudest sound from quietest sound. So every time you add a bit, you essentially double the number of amplitudes, um, or about six decibels. So on a CD, it's about 96 decibels. In reality, it's actually closer to 98 for reasons I don't want to talk about. Uh, but anyway, you get about 96 decibels of range. You do notice that this is you know, pretty close to 120, but still lower than what your ear can actually hear. But unless you're playing something really loud and it also has very, very quiet sounds in it, you know, it's pretty close to to reality. The other bit rate that I, sh I mentioned at the top of the video, the 24-bit, right, we multiply that by 6, and we get 144 decibels of dynamic range, right? You can see this is bigger than our 120, 120 limit on our ear uh, as far as dynamic range. So 24-bit we like a lot, right? We actually do see a significant audible increase of quality when we go from 24-bit to 16-bit. The problem with 24-bit today, though, is actually most of the equipment we have can't actually uh, you know, accurately uh, represent 144 decibels of dynamic range. So if we're using a 24-bit audio format, um, we're actually not limited by the actual computer, we're actually limited by the microphone, the speaker, the converters inside of those things um, before we get to the limit our ear can actually hear. So this is one of the reasons, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why a recording doesn't sound exactly like reality, uh, but one reason you could easily point to, especially in the early days of digital audio, is that, you know, well, we have 16 bits and, you know, our ear can hear more than 16 bits, right? Our ears are effectively our 20-bit systems. Uh, so right there, just on every audio CD, there's a limit of, you know, how good you can make it sound. So anyway, if you learn anything from this video as far as practical knowledge, uh, the thing that you really should be doing uh, is recording all of your stuff in 24 bits if you want uh, nice sounding audio. I can't stress this enough. There's a few other nice things that happen with 24 bits, including increased headroom. Um, but this is the audio format that you want to work with as a professional. Uh, if you're working with 16-bit, um, it's actually through processing and doing other things to this, you're actually going to make the audio quality less. Uh, you might end up turning a 16-bit audio file into a 14-bit audio file just because if you're doing a lot of processing and adding a lot of effects and things, you're lowering the quality each time. If you do the same thing to a 24-bit audio file, you're only going to be lowering it to 22-bit. And hey, that's still within the 120 decibel, right? 22 times 6 is 132 or yeah. Um, still within our 120 decibel limit, no problem. So uh, more bits equals basically more staircases, right? If I recorded this blue sound wave over here at a nicer resolution um, and a nicer sample rate, right? If we had both of those things, right? Instead of seeing these big giant purple pinkish stair waves, staircases, we're gonna see this nice, I'm trying to draw a staircase, but you can see it's going very poorly, a much more accurate little staircase um, or it's going to represent the actual sound much more clearly, uh, much more accurately than a lower bit depth would. In the next video, we're going to be discussing dither. Uh, dither is, if you've never heard of it, it's actually like a secret. Um, but if you're an audio professional, it's something you use everywhere, every day, and just don't even think about it anymore. Um, but for the average amateur, it's actually like a huge secret, and it's one of the things that actually are going to lower the resolution of your audio file compared to a professional. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that you either know or you don't. And if you don't know it, your audio is not going to sound as good as the people who do. So stay tuned for the last video in our digital audio series on 